Should you rather buy a CF Express card or SD memory card for your Fujifilm X-H2 or X-H2S? Let's find out in today's video. So obviously you can use both CF, CF Express and SD memory cards within the Fujifilm X-H2 series. I will start with the Sony TUF G, so one of the fastest, if not the fastest, SD UHS 2 memory card. You can see two contract rows on the back. So that's the best you can get in terms of SD memory card performance. The camera is set up to uncompressed raw shooting, not raw plus JPEG, and is equipped with a yeah, pretty huge buffer. But as you can already hear, we are now limited by the SD memory cards and let's say roughly two and a half, three images per second we can still shoot. So that's okay, but due to the large image buffer and only saving, yeah, let's say, three pictures or images per second, it will take some time to clear the image buffer, usually yeah, 30, 35 seconds with the um, Sony TUF G series. So you have to be patient in a way. And my point is you can get much more performance for yeah, nearly the same, same amount of money or you can save a lot of money with a bit slower as the UHS-2 memory cards, but you're not that much slower. So let's check okay i picked some slower sd memory cards all uhs2 doesn't matter which one alexa 1800x uh, angelbird v60 series or the new rocket v60 from saber and so yeah nearly the same speed all uhs2 memory cards and yeah we are still in the image buffer so same speed as with the sony tough g card and now we are limited by the memory card and you can hear, yeah, it's nearly the same speed as with the Sony Tough G series. Maybe quarter an image less per second, maybe half an image less per second, but not really that much of a difference. And you're saving, I don't know, maybe, or it's three times less expensive per gigabyte than the Sony Tough G. So not a real reason to buy an high-end SD memory card, especially considering the fact that you can also buy an CF Express memory card, which is about the same price per gigabyte as a Sony Tough G or other very high-end UHS-2 memory cards. And the performance is different. These are two of the fastest cards in our test, the Delkin Black series and the Cobalt series from ProGrade. I yeah, pick the Black series from Delkin. So same test. Let's double check that yeah, there's no SD memory card inside. And I could yeah, press the shutter button for as long as I want. That's due to the fact that the CF Express controller in the Fujifilm X-H2 series is extremely, ridiculously fast, up to a gigabyte per second real world wide speed. That's pretty amazing, even a bit more to be honest. So I can do it for as long as I want, or let's say until the card is filled up, obviously. So there's no real limitation. And let me show you on the back, you see the LED indicating it's still being written on the card. And yeah, finished. So the buffer is yeah, nearly immediately clear. Just to measure the performance, I had to switch to uh, WAR plus JPEG, so we have a little bit more of data. Otherwise, just shooting uncompressed WAR isn't, isn't enough data with the Fujifilm X-H2. And you know, it's a lot of resolution, so a lot of data uncompressed. So pretty amazing. And as I said, it's so much faster compared to the SD UHS-2 card controller. So if you do a lot of continuous shooting with the X-H2 or X-H2S, definitely grab and CF Express memory card. But there's also a good reason to buy SD memory cards. If you enjoyed this video so far, please leave a thumbs up and maybe consider to subscribe so we can use the info cards up here so you can check out all results we measured with the Fujifilm X-H2. 
For now, as we are below the 1000 subscriber threshold, you have to click in the video description where you can find the link with all test results for both SD memory card me measurements and CF Express card measurements with the Fujifilm X-H2. But now continuing with the video. What I really enjoyed is filming with the Fujifilm X-H2 or X-H2S. It's great image quality, great dynamic range, even if you don't shoot in F-Log. So what a great film camera and also with a good autofocus. But what's really yeah, important for me, you can pick the bit rate you are recording with, starting with just 50 megabits per second and up to 720 megabits per second, if I remember correctly. So you can really choose how much data is needed. Let's say you have a real static scene like this one. Yeah, maybe 50 megabits per second in 4K video is probably enough. But if you are outside, have a lot of action, a lot of camera movement, a lot of image noise. So maybe go to 360, 720 megabits per second. Up to 360 megabit per second, you can still use an SD memory card, V60 class or V60 video speed class. Totally fine, that's what it made for. So pick an SD memory card, much, much cheaper than a CF Express card and still good enough for videos. So that would be my decision. Pick SD cards if you want to shoot video, pick a CF Express memory card if you want to do a lot of continuous shooting or let's say, yeah, just shooting a lot with the Fujifilm X-H2 because it's much faster both in the camera and also on your card reader, on your PC, notebook, Mac, whatsoever. So that would be my choice.